Now in our last video, we dealt with the myth that says the guitar comes set up, which uh, I've already showed you why that can't be true. No guitars come set up, okay? Um, they don't, not fully set up. Now here at Folkstone Guitars, we give you a 100% setup. It is set up fully. We have the tools to do that, all right? We have the knowledge to do that. We know uh, how a guitar works, what it, what it takes to, to make that action low and buzz free, which is what everybody wants. And we'll make it as low as the guitar itself will allow us to make it. Some guitars set up better than others. So we'll make it as low as, as we can. I have guys that bring a guitar in. They'll bring, uh, he'll bring, a guy will bring, for example, his Martin, and then he'll bring his Gibson, all right, acoustics. And he says, you know that Gibson, that action on that thing is just so sweet. It's just set up so nice. Feel how low that is, Gary. And I'll take the guitar and I'll say, yeah, that's nice and low. And it doesn't buzz either, does it? No, it doesn't buzz. That's really nice. And then he'll hand me his Martin and says, now I want the action on this to be exactly like that. Well, I can get it down there, but it might not be exactly like that, okay? Because guitars set up differently. Some set up better than others. Some have uh, more even fingerboards. Some have a better radius for a setup. I mean, there's so many factors involved in this. And if something is just a hair off, it can make a huge amount of difference. So we aim at setting them up 100%. Now, one of the things that you often hear, and this is the myth of truss rods, okay? Somebody will say, and, and I've, I've had this said to me, uh, growing up as a guitar player and trying to get guitars set up, I've had people tell me this. The neck has got to be perfectly straight on a guitar with the strings tuned up and you'll see guys they'll look down the neck like this with the strings tuned up and they'll try to see if the neck is perfectly straight or not and they'll say well it's got a little bit of a bow in it so let's tighten the truss rod and get rid of that and then your neck will be straight and it'll play better total myth first of all necks with the strings tight are, are not supposed to be straight they're supposed to have a bow in them all right. Uh, secondly, the purpose of the truss rod is not to make a neck perfectly straight. The purpose of the truss rod is to put that bow in there. Now, let me tell you something about a truss rod. Then I want you to remember this statement. All right. Rem if you don't remember anything else, remember this one statement. The truss rod on, gu on a guitar can be your best friend or your worst enemy. All right. Truss rod on a guitar can be your worst enemy or it can be your best friend. In other words, if you tighten it or loosen it properly, if you get it adjusted just right, then it'll work for you and it'll do what it is designed to do. If you get it off, if it's off just a little bit, it can mess with the entire setup. So I want to talk to you about truss rod adjustment. Now, in order to understand uh, truss rod adjustment, the first thing, and by the way, uh, truss rod adjustment is the very first fundamental of a setup. The very first thing a guitar has to have right before, I mean, when you take all the strings off, the very first thing that has to be right about a guitar is the truss rod. All right? Because you can get everything else right. You can get your, your, uh, your intonation and all that done before the truss rod is done and then you go to adjust the truss rod it's going to throw your, your intonation differently it's going to make your action differently always do the truss rod first and um, what you do is once you get the truss rod right with the strings off the guitar you build the entire setup around that proper truss rod adjustment and then you'll have it right now what you have to understand about truss rods is this you have to understand how a guitar works and what really creates string buzz. Now, of course, as I mentioned, if you have frets that are uneven, that can cause string buzz. If you have a truss rod, however, that is too tight so that the neck is perfectly straight with the strings tuned, you're going to have string buzz on there when you attempt to lower the action to a comfortable place. Okay, and here's the reason why. See, people don't understand how a guitar actually works. And I'm going to show you that in this uh, video. Let me grab the camera here.
Now we're looking down at this guitar and I want to show you um, something about and something that makes perfect sense to you if, you've, if you're a guitar player. You already, really, you already knew this, but it's just something I want to remind you of in relationship to adjusting a truss rod and why it must be adjusted properly. The flux of a string, you pluck a string on a guitar like that and notice that it vibrates very aggressively. The flux is very wide right in the center of the string path. But over here near the saddle, it's not. Over here, it's very, very tight. Not much of a wiggle over here. But in the middle, lots of wiggle, lots of flux, right? Down here, how much? Well, just a little bit maybe. Not much, right? Not much wiggle there. But right in the center, you've got a whole lot. So this is where your buzz is going to come from most of the time on a guitar neck. All right, it's going to come from the middle uh, part of the, the fretboard. The, the, the frets right through here, I would say frets from about fret number three or four right up through 12, 11, 13. This is where it's going to be buzzing, okay? And what a truss rod does is it puts a, when you loosen it, it puts a bow in the neck so that it, the middle part of the neck goes down and the action gets higher and it allows clearance for the string flux. So the proper way to adjust a truss rod is to adjust it so that it has just enough neck relief. Neck relief, that's the bow in the, in the neck okay, that allows the string to have room to flux. You want to adjust it so that it has just the right amount of relief here with the strings tightened up so that when the strings are on there, a new set of strings and it's tuned up to standard tuning or whatever tuning the player is going to prefer because then again if we're dealing with uh, down tuning for example then there's going to be less relief in the truss rod because you're going to have to have uh, it's, it's not going, there's not going to be as much tension, you see. But it, let's say standard tuning, all right? With standard tuning, you get the truss rod as, as best as you can with the strings off, and, and there's a secret to doing that. I'm not going to tell you all my secrets on this video, but there's a way that we determine that here at Folkstone Guitars with the strings off. We adjust the truss rod with the strings off. We get it right with the strings off the guitar. Okay, most of the time. Sometimes we have to string it up to really double check, but most of the time we get it right with the strings off. Okay, and I do that with my straight edge. When this is done right, when, you're, when you've got the right amount of relief here, then you can, you can lower the action here at the saddle, and you can lower it here at the nut. And you lower down these two contact points, and they balance out so that the string will lay uniformly across the fingerboard and it'll go uniformly in it's in other words instead of having it very high here and real low down here it'll be more uniform it's always going to be higher here because then again this has to allow for string flux okay so it's always going to be the strings always going to need to be a little higher in this area but then again you don't want to get it so that uh, the, the truss rod so tight the neck is straight and you don't have any room here, you don't have any what you'd call wiggle room for the string, okay? What you want to do is you want to get it so that there is room in this area for the flux and it is lowered at both ends. When you do that, you can have low action and no string buzz, alright? You got that? You can have it low without buzz because you've got the right amount of relief. Now, if you put too much relief in here, if you allow too much of a bow, What's going to happen is the string is going to be buzzing on these upper frets, this upper register here, because when you fret it, when you push down on a string here, when you fret the guitar in this area, the string is going to have to like go uphill. So it's going to be buzzing here because this is very U-shaped in this area. So it's dipping down too much here so that when it's fretted in the middle of the fingerboard, it's buzzing on the upper register. So you've got to have just enough 
This has got to be up just enough, but not straight, but up just enough so that you have uniformity of action and you can lower the strings at both contact points. This is why adjusting a truss rod properly is so important. And um, I must tell you that I have yet been able to find anybody in this area where I work here uh, in this part of the state that really adjust a truss rod properly. Uh, I have guitars that are brought to me all the time that were supposedly set up by a music store and man it ain't set up. I mean the truss rod a lot of times the truss rods way too tight. Uh, you can get more relief going here than, than you really think. Another thing that has to be compensated for is a new set of strings. A new set of strings on a guitar have more tension. So they will pull the truss rod tighter. So you'll think that you've got just the right amount of relief in your uh, truss rod in your neck and you'll have the strings nice and low and then like two weeks later the guitar starts buzzing on the customer. Why? Because you didn't compensate for the string stretching out and getting looser. When they get looser the string is going to, the uh, excuse me, the fingerboard is going to bow up in the middle more and that's going to start some buzz. So what you have to do is you have to compensate for the, the time that the strings are going to stretch out. So you add a little more relief so that when those strings stretch out they will, it'll, it'll really be basically perfect when they, when they fully stretch out. So this is really um, a very tricky thing and there are a lot of factors to consider. So you want to wonder why we're getting such good action here and good results? Here are the reasons. I'm giving you all the reasons on these videos. We're doing it the way it should be done. We will adjust your truss rod properly. All right, And the way to do that is to have just the right amount of relief in this area so that the string has flux and so that it is set down. I notice that this guitar has, I haven't set this guitar up yet, and it does have a buzz uh, here in the center. Evidently, this truss rod is too tight on this guitar. I have not set this guitar up. I'm about to, but I just wanted to use it as an illustration just to have a guitar laying here so I could point to things and show you what was going on. Nice guitar, by the way, an Alvarez. Just a beautiful piece. Nice pickup in there. But um, we can talk about other things later, but just remember that uh, on this video, we're just talking about a truss rod. Uh, the truss rod is... Uh, uh, going through the the neck of the guitar just below the fingerboard usually and it has a it has a threads up here if it's got a nut down here that you tighten inside if it's got a, a nut here adjustment here then it's got a threaded bolt embedded in the neck and you've got to be very careful with truss rods as well let me uh, show you what I'm talking about just take for example this uh, Stratocaster right here uh, this uh, USA Fender Stratocaster. I don't think they're doing this anymore. But this Stratocaster, you can you can see the the um, adjustment uh, port here for the um, Allen wrench that you stick in there and turn the truss rod with. And uh, you'll notice that it's it's quite small. These uh, take a one eighth of an inch uh, truss rod adjustment. Now, as far as I know, they're not putting eighth of an inch truss rods anymore in. USA strats, but this was this was a recipe for a disaster. Why? Because one eighth of an inch is nothing. I mean, it's I've got one over here. Open up my uh, my truss um, my Allen wrench set here, and I'll take out an eighth of an inch right here. Okay, that's an eighth of an inch right there, and it fits in there like so. Now that is small. All right, that is really, that's as big as that truss rod is. It's no bigger than that wrench right there, okay? And it will break very easily. Man, if you ever go in there and a truss rod is hard to turn, don't force it. And by the way, you always have to turn them with the strings off. And uh, I like turning them, if possible, if the neck will unbolt, I like turning them with the neck off the guitar. I mean, every, all the, the tension relieved. And if these eighth of an inch truss rods will snap very easily. Now any truss rod will break or strip so you got to be very careful with that. Uh, Fender uh, lately has put uh, larger uh, truss rods in uh, their Stratocasters. I'm happy to say that uh, 
One of the um, common uh, adjustments now is a 3 16 and that's a good size. This is a um, 3 16 Allen right here, which you can see is a lot larger. Um, a lot of your um, Squire strats will use a 4 or a 4.5 millimeter. If it's Asian made, it's going to use a millimeter. Okay. If it is a Canadian made guitar, it's going to use a millimeter. If it is a USA or Mexican Strat, it's going to probably, as a, even as a Mexican, probably going to use an American size because the Mexican factory normally gets all of its parts from the USA factory. At least, you know, unless they they do a switcheroo on me, I, that's has been my experience. So I find that the three sixteenths is really much better, you know, a much larger size for a truss rod wrench is the way to go. And, um, you know, uh, these small truss rods, uh, don't turn them, don't even try. Bring the guitar in, let us turn it for you. We won't break your truss rod. Um, and a lot of times, if, if you buy a guitar off eBay, and I, I always try to discourage that, but if you do, some guys, you, you know, they'll sell a guitar on eBay and they're just dumping it because uh, the truss rod is broken. I had a guy, uh, a customer, uh, bought a, a Fender Precision Bass with one of these little truss rod uh, ports here. And I could see right away it had an eighth of an inch truss rod. And he said the truss rod's broke. When he bought it off eBay, the truss rod was already broken. The customer, uh, the seller rather, was trying to uh, sell a guitar with a broken truss rod. And he succeeded in selling a Fender USA P bass at full price. I think it was something like twelve, fourteen hundred dollars with a broken truss rod. So you got to be very careful of that and um, there's nothing wrong. I mean if you have one of these small ones uh, don't worry about it. You know it's going to be fine but it needs to be adjusted regularly because if you leave it dormant for like I don't know five, six, twelve years and you never adjust this thing one day you'll go to turn it and it won't turn. But we know how to get them turned if they won't turn. We know how to get them going here and uh, we know how to get that uh, right relief in the neck if that is called for. So um, anyway, uh, this one here, we're going to work on the tailpiece on this one and it uh, needs to be detailed. Uh, you can see that uh, the saddles here are the, um, the offset mount uh, saddles and uh, it's a two-point tremolo and a uh, nice Stratocaster and a nice Seymour Duncan uh, hot rail there. And uh, we're going to do a full setup on this guitar and a tremolo detail. So I hope you enjoyed this video on the truss rod. And I uh, hope it has enlightened you about doing setups. I do not recommend that you do a setup yourself on a guitar. Now you can set it up somewhat. You can turn your truss rod a little bit. You can give it some relief. You can lower your saddles. You can adjust these for a little better intonation. I'm not saying you can't do that. I'm saying that... If you want your guitar set up 100%, all right, if you want these lowered here, for example, if you want this done with a nut file, if you want your saddles to be done right, if you want your intonation right, if you want everything on the guitar fully checked, all the hardware, everything tightened, everything just like it should be, then you need to get a tech to do it. Don't believe anybody that will tell you, oh, you can set the guitar up yourself. Don't go with these videos on YouTube that show you how to set up guitars. I mean, I guess some of them are okay, but, you know, some of those guys really don't know what they're doing. So, um, it's important to, you know, just, it's not going to be very expensive. We charge like 40 bucks plus a set of strings to do a full setup on your guitar. I mean, if it's got two or three uneven frets, we'll even take those down a little bit. Okay, so, I mean, it's not going to be all that much money. Uh, we'll adjust your pickup height so that the output is, is uniform uh, on your pickups. We'll blow out your pots. You know, check all these. Make sure your connections are right. Make sure your output jack is okay. If it doesn't need to be changed, it's got some, some uh, static in there. We can clean that out for you. We do all that in the setup. We tighten up these strap pins. It's this one right here. Uh, is not tight. It's just spinning and spinning and spinning. I'm going to tighten that up. I haven't done the setup yet on this guitar. Uh, you know, all these things we check over and we, we, we do in a basic setup. So I don't know where else you're going to get that. Um, 
I don't know uh, who's going to do all those things for you in a basic setup, but we do them here and we do them for a low price. So you're going to get your guitar set up right. And um, uh, just, just give us a call and or go to the website folkstoneguitars.com and you can see all of our prices and read about all of our work there. Uh, thanks, have a good day. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it has been informative. Over and out.